happy Valentine's Day. It's not actually Valentine's Day. It's February 19th. When this is uploaded, it will be the 25th. But better late than never, am I right? Uh, so to commemorate the month of love, I figured I would walk you through every person I've ever married in a video game. Um, and tell you maybe why you should or shouldn't give them a chance in your gaming future. Um, this video will include spoilers for Stardew Valley, um, Skyrim, and I would say The Sims 4, but I don't really think I could spoil that game for you if I tried, but I guess spoilers for The Sims 4. <laughs> So we're gonna get started with Stardew Valley. Um, surprisingly, this is the shortest list for me um, out of all of these games. I have 100%ed the game. It's the only game I've ever 100%ed in my gaming career. Um, and it's one of my favorites, but I've only gotten married twice. And I think this is because a lot of times I get bored and I start a new save file, but I don't ever get to the point of like marriage with someone, but I did twice. <laughs> so um, my Stardew Valley spouses were Elliot and Leah, who they are the same person in two different fonts. Um, so maybe I have a type. Um, Elliot was my first Stardew Valley spouse. I love him. <laughs> he is an author uh, that lives on the beach in a little cabin. Um, he spends all of his time writing books. He plays piano. Um, when you romance him, he is very sweet. He talks all the time about how like you inspire him to write romance, poetry, um, in his storyline, he dedicates his book to you, which, as an author myself, oh my god, <laughs> like, fastest way to my heart. When you get married, when he moves in, his little room is like a library, which I think is really nice. Um, especially compared to the other rooms you get with the different spouses. I think his, like, looks really nice in my house, especially, like, compared to, uh, Shane's. <laughs> um, and also, like, when you get married, he goes on his book tour, um, and every single day, that he's gone, he writes you a love letter, which is very, very sweet. Um, and it kind of sucks that he's gone for a whole week, but like, the love letter is very sweet. Um, the only con with him that I have is that his taste is pretty picky. Um, he likes duck feathers, pomegranates, rabbit's foot, squid ink, lobster, all of which are kind of difficult to come by in the game, especially pomegranates. Like, it's a very expensive tree takes a whole month to grow. If you don't have like fruit bats, um, it's gonna take a while anyway because it's a fall tree. Um, so yeah, it takes, takes a while to get the stuff that he really loves, but I really do think that he is worth the work that you have to put into courting him. Um, he's very sweet. One of his lines um, is about how, because he lives at the beach, um, a little crab has taken up residence in his pocket, like the pocket of his, uh, his suit coat. I think that is so sweet. <laughs> like, but yeah, a little high maintenance, but I don't really mind. Um, he, his backstory is that he was from a, like, a pretty well-to-do family, and he either left them or got cut out because, um, he, you know, wanted to pursue his dream of writing, and that is relatable retweet. I honestly have nothing bad to say about Elliot. A lot of people hate him. I don't know why. When, with Elliot, you either really like him or you really don't, and I don't know why that is. The people that really hate Elliot also tend to be the people that go for Shane, um, so the taste there might be a little questionable. Um, overall, quite honestly, I would give him a 10 out of 10. We're starting pretty high this video. Um, I recommend marrying him. He's my favorite. Um, I love him. He's one of the reasons why I love the game so much. The next Stardew Valley spouse, and the only other one on this list, is Leah. Um, Leah is very similar to Elliot, like I said. Same person, different font. They're both redheads. Um, instead of a shack at the beach, she lives in a cabin by the river. She does art instead of writing. Uh, she's very sweet. She is canonically bisexual, which I think is really cool. Um, when you're playing the game, she has an ex-partner, and if you're playing as a female, the ex-partner is a female, and if you're playing as a male, the ex-partner is male as well. So I think that's really cool. Um, like some built-in bisexuality. Technically all of the bachelors are bisexual. Like you can romance them no matter what gender you're playing. Um, but I like that it's worked into the canon with her. She, compared to Elliot, is very easy to please. Um, she likes salads, which you can buy from Gus for like a couple hundred gold. Um, she likes goat cheese and wine, which retweet. <laughs> she bonds with the farmer over, um, 
their reason for moving to Pelican Town because um, they both wanted to get away from the big city life and move somewhere simpler. The only thing with Leah, and this might be a me thing, is sometimes her interactions are a little bit awkward. I almost picked the wrong dialogue option a couple of times, and one of these times is during one of her last cutscenes. Um, you have a picnic and her ex shows up and you have the option to punch her ex and if you do Leah's like oh wow farmer that was really violent um but if you don't punch the ex then Leah punches them and it's like okay you were gonna call me really violent for doing that but then you go ahead and do it and like go Leah like they deserved it I'm really glad that she punched them but also like I don't know kind of a double standard that one really um really bugged me a little bit. I didn't punch them, just to be clear, but you know, I was looking it up because I didn't want to make the wrong choice. And um, I was like, why? <laughs> um, for those reasons, I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10, but I really do like her. Uh, she grew on me a lot. I used to not like her because she hung out with Elliot all the time and I was like, she's still my man. But um, you know, it's, it's not like that. They're just friends. <laughs> and she likes wine. And once I found out that she really liked wine and cheese and salad, I was like, oh, this is my girl. Like, I love her. <laughs> and I married her. Yeah, and that's it for Stardew Valley. Um, I know, surprisingly short list. Um, next on my marriage list is Maru and Sam. They're both really nice to me. I think Maru's really cute and she's really smart and I want to give her a shot. Um, so maybe next year we'll dive back into this. <laughs> The next game I'm going to be talking about is The Sims 4. I didn't think I would include this. I, it's a game I play a lot, um, and like kind of the whole point is like getting married, having kids, doing that whole thing. And you can marry anyone, right? So, <laughs> you know, there are obviously a lot of Sims that I have married that are just Sims that I made, um, or Sims that I found on the gallery, like Sims that you wouldn't know of just watching this video. Um, so I'm only going to include the ones that are, um, like townies from the game, from packs in the game. Um, and that said, the only three that I have married are all from the vampires pack, which should come as no surprise. I am a certified vampire girly. Uh, yeah, so I've married all three of them. We'll start with Vlad. Vlad is something of an icon in The Sims 4. Um, he's infamous. He shows up at your Sims door like pretty much as soon as you get vampires. And he waits, and he waits, and then he comes in and, like, helps himself to their blood, logs on their computer, like, you know, just annoying, <laughs> typical Sims behavior. And my meeting with Vlad in this particular save started like that. He showed up on my doorstep. I wanted to become a vampire. The Sim I was playing as, I don't remember her name, but her aspiration was to be, like, a very powerful vampire. She was going to start, like, you know, like an orphanage for vampire children and raise them up to be powerful and that was like the whole thing. Um, and so he showed up and she was like, oh, this is my chance. So she like got to know him, they became friends. At first she was just like using him for the vampirism. Uh, he turned her because obviously Vlad will like turn your sims on a whim. I think he like has fun doing that. <laughs> so he's the best one to go to to be turned. Um, and then he gives you like tutorial stuff. Very nice. Anyway, um, you know, they met, they fell in love, kind of naturally, and um, it's hard because Vlad is awkward, <laughs> but they made it work, and uh, they got married, he moved in, I gave him a little makeover, he's a silver fox now, what can I say? Um, so his traits are loner, music lover, and evil, <laughs> which is fun, always fun, worked very well for that playthrough. And he plays the pipe organ, that's one of his skills, like when, when he spawns, it's one of his skills, which is very neat, love that for him. He has a pipe organ in his house. The con with Vlad is that when I was playing with him at least, um, he had that annoying hissing weakness um, that the vampires can get where every time they hiss, your friendship level with anyone nearby goes down. And it was just like a constant struggle to make it so that his wife didn't hate him. <laughs> I was like, why is this happening? And that's a Sims 4 thing. Like, I'm sorry, Vlad, that's not really your fault, but I wish they would just kind of take the relationship debuff away from that, because it's just annoying. It's really, really annoying. Like, why would someone who's been their friend or spouse for so long start hating them because they hiss? I don't know. It's just, it's a whole thing. Additionally, he is kind of a stalker. <laughs> um, he breaks into Sims' homes, he steals their blood, and or turns them against their will. 
Um, which is kind of a turnoff, if I'm being honest. Kind of not a great guy. I, overall, I would give him a 6 out of 10. Um, not a perfect husband, but if you're looking for some chaos in your vampire sim's life, um, he might be the one to marry. <laughs> The next up is Lilith Vitor, who is one of the two Vitor siblings. She is awesome. She's pretty cool. She's outgoing, creative, and active, which are all pretty decent traits. Um, the thing that's hard about rating these Sims is that, um, especially in The Sims 4, they don't really have very strong personalities and they don't really have very strong backstories. Um, when I was doing research for this video, I found that um, Lilith and Caleb actually have a cousin that came with the werewolf pack. But I didn't know that, one, because I don't play with werewolves, and two, because their relationship is not, like, set in the game. Um, and it's a cross-pack compatibility thing, like, they don't know her. <laughs> and so there's that whole thing where, like, the packs interact with each other but aren't really, you know, fully fleshed out. Uh, so that kind of sucks. Sims 4 thing. She was turned into a vampire by Vlad, and her cousin, I think her name is Lily, <laughs> um, says that Lilith was always the one that had kind of a dark side, which I thought was cool. Looks-wise, she looks great. Like, she looks pretty fine. I don't really like her bangs, but who am I to talk? <laughs> She's not super interesting, but she is a cute goth girl, so if you're into cute goth girls and vampires, I would probably also give her a 6 out of 10. Now, Caleb. Caleb Vitor, uh, maybe the love of my sim life. I love him. <laughs> I've married him, I think like six or seven times now, um, and I have no regrets about any of them. Even if my main sims don't get married to him, sometimes I'll give them a sibling just so they can get married to Caleb and I can have him in the house. Like, I love him that much. <laughs> He's a sweet guy. Um, he doesn't drink from human sims. He does like the plasma fruit blood bag thing. Um, and he kind of shames you if you do drink human blood, uh, which, you know, would be kind of a turn off for me, but we'll give him a pass because I love him. <laughs> Perfect in my eyes, actually, and he can do no wrong. Um, his traits are foodie, ambitious, and materialistic. You know, it's kind of giving Elliot a little bit. <laughs> he is also, and I found this out while researching, um, canonically bisexual as well. Um, in the trailer for Vampires, you can see Caleb, who I think had a different name in the trailer, but he looks the same. He's the same dude. He was flirting with men and women in the trailer. I love that for him. <laughs> uh, the fact that I just keep coming back to this man, I think I have to give him a 10 out of 10. Um, he's just perfect. I get excited every time he shows up on my Sims doorstep. Uh, and even if I don't have any plans of, like, having any of my Sims marry him, like, every time he shows up on my doorstep, I kind of think about it. I'm like, hmm, could my son, like, leave their spouse for Caleb? Can we work Caleb in as the third? Like, how how can I keep him in my life? You know what I mean? Um, and another good thing with him is, as a vampire sim, he is immune to the sun, um, which is great, because <laughs> Lilith is not. You have to be real careful when she's outside. <laughs> um, but with Caleb, you don't have to worry about that, so that's really nice. And with that, we leave The Sims 4, and we move on to the kingdom of Skyrim. Um, this is where it gets interesting. I've played a lot of Skyrim and I didn't think I had married that many people and then, you know, I was like going through the list and I was like, oh, I've had quite a few spouses. So, uh, so first and foremost, we have Farkas. Uh, he is a companion that lives in Whiterun. He's a werewolf. That's kind of a spoiler. <laughs> he was my first husband. I had no clue what I was doing when I started playing and so I was just like wandering Whiterun as one does. I stumbled upon the Hall of the Companions, and I was like, oh, this guy's kind of nice. Did the quest line, totally fell for him. Like, he's- I like his voice. I think that's the thing, is a lot of people go for either Vilkis or Farkas. Vilkis is his twin brother. Farkas is, like, the lovable meathead of the two. Like, he doesn't have a lot going on upstairs, but he has a whole lot going on in his heart. Um, to the point where Codlack like, in his journal notes that Farkas is too kind-hearted to be the harbinger of the companions, which is a green flag for me. Like, maybe too soft to be the head of the companions, but just soft enough to be my husband. I love him. Um, and yeah, like I said, I prefer his voice to Vilkis's, which 
I wish it didn't play into my marriage choices as much as it does, but with a game like Skyrim, especially like the marriage candidates, they all kind of have the same voices. <laughs> and so you have to pick the ones that you're willing to put up with a lot. Uh, and he's one of them. So, and he's also afraid of frostbite spiders, which same bestie. I don't really like spiders. <laughs> Um, yeah, to marry him you have to complete the companion's quest line, but it's a really fun one. I would recommend it, um, if you haven't. Woo woo woo. Woo woo woo. Sounds like two of the neighbor's dogs are arguing. I'm gonna give him an 8 out of 10. He is a really strong marriage candidate. We're starting out strong. Um, speaking of starting out strong, <laughs> uh, this is Onmund. He... He was my favorite for a long time. This is mostly because he was voiced by Jason Marsden. Um, you might know him as Max Goof or Kovu from The Lion King 2. He did a lot of voices in Skyrim, um, one of whom being the courier and the other one being Onmund. You know, I thought Onmund was nice enough. I was doing the College of Winterhold quest line, which is one of my favorites as someone who plays with a mage a lot. Like, it's really great for getting cool magical artifacts, getting good gear that has good magic buffs, and also um, just building up your magic skills in general, learning new spells and stuff like that. It's a great quest line. It's not completely finished, but that's fine. <laughs> um, he's one of your, like, fellow students in your class. Uh, he's a Nord. Um, and he talks about how his family is kind of upset with him learning magic. And this is the kicker. Um, he was kind of racist to me. <laughs> so the first time I married him, I was playing as a Nord. And it was something we bonded over. We were like, oh, haha, ha, Nords hate magic. Like, I, he was like, I'm so glad you're here. Like, I'm not the only Nord. Um, if you don't play as a Nord... He's like, oh, I was kind of hoping there would be another Nord, and that's fine and good. Then he says, you know how Nords are. They think that magic is for lesser races. And I was like, whoa, buddy. I was playing an elf that playthrough, I think, and I was just like, why would you say that? And he follows it up with, no offense. And I was like, no, I am offended. <laughs> Actually, I am offended. Um, so if you want to marry that. He has a separate little quest uh, to go retrieve his family heirloom from one of the other people at the college. So not too hard to marry. Uh, <laughs> if he wasn't racist, he would be a 7 out of 10, but because he is, it's gonna be a 0 out of 10. I don't tolerate that shit. Um, and I haven't married him since. That's good Beppus. Next is Mercurio. I kind of married Mercurio on accident. Um, I had hired him. Uh, we had traveled together, like, a lot. You know, we'd, we'd gone on some adventures. I needed some help. He's great as a follower. Like, he's really strong. He's a magic user. He does spells, <laughs> you know. And so a lot of times he would take out enemies from afar before I could even get close to them, which is really nice. Um, he's pretty smart compared to some of the other followers. Like, he doesn't really set off traps unnecessarily like Lydia. <laughs> I like his voice a lot. Um, I think that's really nice. Like I said, a lot of them have the same voice actors. You gotta be picky with this kind of thing. And I totally wasn't planning on marrying him, right? I was going to hire him to go pick up the person I was planning on marrying. And so I was wearing the Amulet of Mara, and he was just like, oh, is that the Amulet of Mara? And I didn't know he was a marriage candidate. I was like, oh. And it just kind of felt natural, you know what I mean? Like, we had been on so many adventures together, I was just like, this is... this makes sense <laughs> for this character. This makes a lot of sense. Um, so I married him. And he also... Side note, because you can just hire him and then he immediately becomes a marriage candidate, he is the fastest um, person you can marry. So if you see someone doing like a Skyrim marriage speedrun, it's always Mercurio. He's just the easiest one. But that said, he is very sweet. He's a great husband. He was great with the kids. Um, yeah, I liked him a lot. Uh, 9 out of 10. No real complaints there. Uh, he's great. He's powerful. I'm not worried he's going to die if I leave the house. Like with some of these spouses, I'm like, Oh my god, he has to live in Whiterun, he can never leave the house because he'll die if there's bandits. But with Mercurio, I know he can handle himself. Like, I know he's gonna be okay. <laughs> the next one is Scout's Many Marshes, who is an Argonian. And I believe there's only, like, three you can marry in the game. He works at the docks in Windhelm, which is the most racist city in the game. And the reason that he and all the Argonians live at the docks 
is because Ulfric Stormcloak literally won't let them live in the city. Do with that what you will. Um, he's very sweet. Uh, he is a trainer for the light armor skill, so that's really cool. Um, you, there's a mission you can do for him where you're, like, negotiating for higher pay for the dock workers. Just, like, a short little thing. And then once you do that for him, he becomes a marriage candidate. Because he's an Argonian, he has really cute marriage dialogue. He doesn't have as much as the other characters. I'm not sure why this is. Like, once you actually get married, some of those options are gone. Like, how are the kids? That kind of thing. Um, so I'm guessing they just didn't record that when they did the, uh the Hearthfire DLC. But yeah, he when you get married and he asks you like, oh, where do you want to live? Um, you pick the place and he's like, it'll be our little nest. And I was like, oh my god. Like he's just, yeah, very cute, very sweet. He's honestly like one of my favorite spouses. He was my most recent spouse as well. So I might be a little biased, but um, I had never married him before and I would recommend it. Nine out of ten. <laughs> the next is Durkethis, who is the other Argonian that you can marry. And here's the thing, I tried to marry him first. I tried to marry him like a year before I wound up with Scouts Many Marshes, um, and we got married and it was fine, and he like ran away <laughs> after the marriage. Like I didn't even have a chance to catch up with him and ask him where he wanted to live. Like he booked it out of that temple. He was gone. I was like, what do you mean? Like, we got married, we went through the ceremony, and then he was gone. And I went to the mines where you find him, because when you, uh, you have to rescue him, he gets captured by Falmer, you have to find him in a cave, um, and once you do that, you can marry him, so I did, and he ran. And so I went back to the mines where he was originally, and I couldn't find him there either, I checked all my houses, like, he had just disappeared. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened to him. Looking into it, it is a common glitch that happens with him. Um, so you probably won't want to marry him. I'm only gonna give him a 1 out of 10, which nothing against him or his personality, uh, but the devs made him impossible to love. Um, the last spouse, the last official spouse, is uh, Gorbash the Iron Hand, who is an orc. Like with the Argonians, um, there's only a handful of orcs you can marry. Uh, Gorbash lives at like one of the orc strongholds. Um, he's pretty cool. Like you get in a brawl with him and if you win the brawl then he can come with you as a follower. You can also bribe him or like persuade him to come with you, but those ones kind of feel dirty to me. I don't know. I don't want to bribe him to be my friend, you know what I mean? But um, once you win that brawl with him, he can be your follower or a marriage candidate. And he's cool. He, like, was an adventurer and then came back to the stronghold. And he's, like, living there doing his duty, but he wants to go adventuring again. So you can make that dream come true for him and, like, take him on an adventure. He was a good husband. Um, he was a good father from what I remember, but I didn't play that save for very long, so he doesn't really, like, stick out to me. Um, I'm gonna give him a 7 out of 10, so still a good, like, overall score, just, you know. And finally, the one I would marry in a heartbeat if I could, but I can't because I can't play with mods right now. <laughs> My computer situation is kind of tricky, but if I could, I would. Right now, immediately. Drum roll, please. It's Serana. Of course it's Serana. Obviously it's Serana. She is the best follower in the game. She's the smartest NPC that there is. She is a vampire princess. Um, she's amazing. She fights really well. She uses, like, magic. She has, like, an icicle spell. <laughs> she's really cool. She holds her own. She's essential, so she can't die. I love her so much. Her story is one of the coolest things in Skyrim. I love, love, love the Dawnguard DLC. It's, like, one of my favorite storylines to play. It's so fun. Um, and it's all about vampires and vampire hunters and she's at the center of that conflict. As soon as I get the ability to do that that quest line, as soon as someone's in one of the towns like we're joining up with the Dawn Guard. I'm like, "Okay, I am too. Let's go get my wife." <laughs> like I love her and she, you know, she's journeyed with me for so long in so many saves. She's so smart. She like has all of these really cool dialogue options when you like go different places. She talks about what it was like before. She was like trapped in stone for hundreds of years. She's awesome. She's awesome and she looks great, you know? <laughs> she's just really pretty. She's excellent moral support. She's my ride or die. And honestly, I don't think Skyrim would be as close to my heart as it is without her in it. 
Plus she's a vampire and I'm a certified vampire girly. I love her. So for that, and ignoring the fact that I can't marry her, <laughs> I'm gonna have to give her a 10 out of 10. She's a 10 out of 10 spouse. She's perfect. Um, honorable mention to Brynjolf of the Thieves Guild. I also love him. I also can't marry him. He has an awesome accent and he calls me Lass, which I think is very nice. It's gonna be a 9 out of 10 for him, but he's not on the tier list. <laughs> Speaking of which, all right, I've put together a tier list. <laughs> Top tier, love of my life, legends. We have Elliot, obviously, my comfort character. I love him so much. Next to him is Caleb Vitor. No surprise there. I've married him seven times. And then, finally, in the top tier, Serana. Love of my life. <laughs> Every time I play with her, I'm like, that's my wife. That's my wife. I love her. Okay, second tier, very good spouse. We have Leah. We have Farkas and Mercurio and Scouts Many Marshes. They're great. No complaints there. Um, I think they're all awesome. <laughs> uh, in the middle we have, eh. Like, they're not bad by any means. They're like fine, but they're not notable. Uh, we have Lilith Vitor. I prefer your brother, I'm so sorry. And Gorbash the Iron Hand, who, again, is fine. No complaints. I just don't really particularly remember our marriage. <laughs> and then, under that, less than ideal. We have the husbands that are kind of eh. Uh, Vlad, who, as we said, stalker. <laughs> uh, and then Drakethus, who ran away from our wedding. And then under that bottom tier, hates elves, frowny face, Anmund, which it's lonely at the bottom, as they say. <laughs> yeah, so that's the tier list. Um, that's the video. Uh, what, what, what did you think? Who are your favorite video game spouses? Who are your favorite, like, Sims, Townies to marry? Do you play Skyrim? Who have you married in Skyrim? Is there anyone I'm missing out on? I know I should marry Lydia at some point. I just kind of don't wanna. Who have you married? Who do you wanna marry? Who do you recommend I marry next in Stardew Valley? Is it Maru? Is it Sam? Is it Sebastian? Don't say Shane. I'm not marrying Shane. My roommate did that so I didn't have to. <laughs> next in terms of video game videos, maybe a Skyrim playthrough, maybe a Stardew Valley playthrough, maybe some Sims stuff. Yeah, that's gonna be it. My next video is going to be a very big one. Um, it's gonna be really long. It's gonna be about my journey as a writer. <laughs> yeah, so if that interests you at all, tune in next week. What do I say at the end? Take your meds, drink your water, I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.